which is basically just a long term to say that I'm the face that runs the place pretty much, okay? Um, but with that, the uh, purpose of uh, this evening is that uh, we want to kind of talk to you all about what Junior ROTC is. Um, this is a lot different than any other course that your son or daughter uh, will take during their time here at Cimarron Memorial. And sometimes you know how you know how kids are. I got three teenagers at home. Okay, like we'll tell them something, but then you all will get half the story. All right. So here we want to try to give you the full story about what Junior ROTC is. Uh, I'm very appreciative of your time, so I will uh, try to keep this uh, within the hour, and then uh, I'll open up to the floor for questions. And then afterwards, if you want to stay here and answer questions, I will be here all night. The cadets will be here all night to uh, make this happen. But um, I will go ahead and uh, get started and have a uh, few things to say, so we'll just put that. So, uh, we call ourselves the uh, Blackjacks, okay? Uh, it's kind of our uh, nickname. We're still Spartans at heart, but we call ourselves the Blackjacks. Well, why is that? Most units uh, use their last two numbers to kind of designate who they are. Just so happens, our last two numbers happen to be 21. And obviously, we're here in Vegas, we have Blackjacks, and there you go. Okay? But if you're able to look in the logo, a little, uh, you can go back a couple slides, real quick, by the time, oh, there we go, right there. So our logo has the Air Force logo, we are Air Force unit, but it also has the Spartan head as well, because we are still Spartans at heart. So that's really what our logo means, that's why we call ourselves Blackjacks, it's something that stuck. Uh, the cadets that I had my first year made that logo, it was approved by headquarters, uh, Air Force ROTC, so again, the cadets doing a great thing. seventh year, we have won the Distinguished Unit Award. That, is, that mean, basically means that we're one of the top 30% of units in the entire world. When I say the entire world, I mean the entire world because there are not just units here in Nevada, there are units all across the United States, Germany, Korea, Japan, uh, Belgium, okay, all kind of, and Guam, all kind of places in between. So uh, that's something that I take great pride in, and again, it's not me, it's these fine cadets and the cadets that have come before them that have set that standard. And in 2019, we won the Distinguished Unit Award with Merit, highest, unit, highest honor uh, a unit could receive. We had an inspection. Someone from headquarters came down, looked over, said we are awesome, and said the cadets are awesome, our program is awesome, and we earned that. Uh, I'm looking forward to earning it again this year. We can only earn it when we get inspected, but unfortunately we won't get inspected this year. Next year, we will be inspected. And I told your cadets, your son and daughter, that they're going to have a big role in that inspection next year. They don't even know what it is yet, all right? So they will they will come to learn that as we go on throughout the year, but they do have a big role in that. And I expect that in, whoops, I expect that in 2023, I'll be able to say, last 2024, that we won our second one. So that's the goal. Next, please. All right, real quick, I think with any organization, you gotta have a mission. Why are we here? Why are we here, all right? And basically, it's to create a better black text, a strong character, Dedicated to serving the nation, all right, being a good citizen, and the Las Vegas community. One of the great things that I'm uh, proud of in this unit is that we typically average anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 hours of community service in the Las Vegas area here at Cimarron Memorial, okay? So again, your son or daughter is going to be a part of that. That's not Major Williams doing that. That is your son or daughter. That is these cadets. That is the other cadets. That's this whole unit. So we're very uh, proud of that and being able to be good stewards of our nation and great America. Along with that, we have to bolster our vision of personal and organizational excellence. I'm all about making cadets, making people, young men and women, that can be the best they can be, all right? And I hold them to a very high standard. And if they haven't told you already, at least in the first couple of weeks, about how I kind of do things, I am very big on standards. I'm very big on such things as chivalry. Everything we do, we go through doors, I always let ladies go through first. It's about being a good gentleman. I always make sure that Men have the pants all the way up, not sagging. They can't sag in my class, all right? Also, ladies, no crop top, right? None, 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 none of that stuff, right? We don't need to see all the, well, I can say woman issues and things like that, all right? So dress, you know, dress proper, and you will be a proper person going forward, all right? The last thing, dynamic, dominant, discipline. Everything we do, we do the best. That's dynamic. Dominant, we want to be the best at it, the best that we can be. You're going to see the best of what this unit has to offer these young men and women over here. And last thing, discipline. You can't do anything without discipline. 
Everything starts with discipline. I'm, and I run between myself and my uh, fellow instructor, Chief Green. We're all about discipline. But again, it's not just us. It's these leaders, all right, the ones that are going to come up here and talk to you all of what discipline truly means. All right, they're the ones that help carry it out. And sooner or later, as I talk to some of you all, maybe your son and daughter in a year, two years, will be up here doing this exact same briefing that these cadets are doing right here. But it's the discipline. It starts from the discipline. That's what we teach every day. Okay? So with that, uh, very quickly, um, I just want to cover a couple, couple quick things. I'm very big on uh, public affairs and kind of advertising what we do. We have uh, we do a lot of main pictures. That's our last main photo that we took from last year. We also have a, a website and other social media platforms. Next. So what that allows us to do is that you're able to know about basically everything that we do. So if any of you all have any Instagram, I think that's the best place to get a good idea about what we do, you go to our Instagram page. We also have a YouTube page that my uh, PA shop that is overseen by Cadet Second Lieutenant Broxham. Where, where, where <laughs>
am the Aerospace Science Instructor. This is my uh, fifth year here, fifth year teaching all CC, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with uh, your sons and daughters this year and seeing where we go uh, at the end of the year. Next slide. All right, just a little bit about what we do here in the school. So, 8% of what we do is going to be uh, weekly inspections, and as you know, some of uh, the cadets last week got uniform, and that's uh, part of uh, that 80%. Also, uh, lectures. We give lectures. Once we get, when we give lectures, we uh, have handouts that we give to the cadets um, to go, go along with us when we provide the lectures. And then we also have a quarterly basic knowledge test. Basic knowledge test, basically for the first year, will be uh, National Chain of Command, Core chain command, knowing military jargon like uh, military time, uh, how to say their last name in uh, phonetic alphabet. So those are some of the things that fall in that eight percent. Then we have uh, side work uh, activities, which a lot of them yeah, just got a little taste of this week is uh, physical fitness. Right. And uh, I'm sure they came home and they told you a lot about. I just love PT and I can't wait to do it again. <laughs>
Everything we do in this core ties together. Everything we do in this core has a purpose. Respect. This is the foundation our unit is built on. We do not only respect this unit, but we respect each other's as cadets. Discipline. Meeting standards and followership. Discipline keeps you going throughout the motivation. Commitment. Air Force core values. Integrity for it. Integrity garners trust among colleagues. Service before self. As a community service organization, we truly believe in service before self. We have over 2,500 hours of community service from last year to truly show up from it. And excellence in all we do. As I said, everything we do has a purpose. And exceeding in everyday activities is ours. Positive attitude. Accomplish goals, work hard, play hard. Our challenging core is very, very hard. But we have a lot of after school activities and morale events to make it all worthwhile. Teamwork, working with others in a family atmosphere. We have over 35 leadership positions that give opportunities to get to cadets, to show responsibility and contribute to something that's bigger than themselves. Leadership, responsibility, and taking care of others. The number one job of a leader is to create and develop more leaders. Next. Quarterly all call. We hold quarterly all calls at the end of each quarter to recognize those outstanding cadets that truly deserve it. We have cadet of the quarter board and cadet of the year boards. Those are where cadets are selected by our flight commander on a select criteria to really show themselves. Annual awards night. We have that at the end of each year to really recognize our outstanding and exceeding cadets that truly deserve it. We have special competitions. I'll go into that later because that's what our vice corps commander oversees. Rank promotions, we have rank promotions at our quarterly all calls to truly recognize those that deserve it. Next. And as you see here, we have our blackjack wing chain of command. We have our two groups, our five flight commanders, and we also have all of the cadet officers that have positions in this board. And I will hand it back to Cadet Captain Ashley Gomez.
conversation with all of us right now. <laughs> all right. The, each day I will be wearing the uniform either on Thursday or Friday, depending on which day you have our PC class. They will either be on the board, which probably will be using either the first day that some of our top class are wearing, or our service dress, which our pants are done with. And then each student is expected to properly maintain their uniform by cleaning it after every two to three wears. And get very good care of it. <laughs> when our cadets are wearing the ROTC, the GRTC uniform, they are normally representing the core and GRTC and the military. So make sure to keep an appropriate image, and we are cadets 24/7. We emphasize this because whether we like it or not, <laughs> we tend to stand out. And every teacher, when they find out we're cadets. They keep us on like a higher standard and like very okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, I would like to now introduce our core command. Our sorry, look, our core command chief, JLo, Cadet Chief Master Sergeant JLo Reserve. <laughs>
from standards and basic knowledge. Grooming? Grooming standards is hair. Females are supposed to have a bun. Males are supposed to have a be shaved. And nails. Uniform and quality presentation. As it was said, we are in a 24 7. So the way you're in uniform is very important. Every teacher will know your drills to see, believe it or not. And basic knowledge will go one step to the next slide. Basic knowledge. Will be expected, high school will be expected to know basic knowledge, which consists of national chain of command, core chain of command, which is the top staff and the <coughs> and flight sergeants. <coughs> Brains of the Air Force, General Information, Phonetic Alphabet, and Military Science. This is very important because during our inspections, your cadet will be inspected by this. Each of these will be questioned that falls with the inspection. Um, also, we have uh, the, the basic knowledge test that's going to happen in October to let your cadets know to study. We are also very big on communication, as what Major said, so we have a Remind app. Remind is basically an app that's used for communication. Also, it is utilized by Major, Chief Green, Chief Green, and Cadet Leadership. We'll make announcements, deadlines, also any events, things that's gonna happen. So for us today, every cadet received a Remind that Cadet Tonight is gonna happen. Every cadet should join, should, should join their, put the reminder, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have to remind the class if they haven't already. Uh, physical training. Uh, General TC counts as PE credits that managed by the Director of Physical Education, the DOE. Quarterly PFT assistants are conducted to track cadet progress throughout the year. The three PFT events total is one minute push-ups, one minute setups, and the one mile run. If you get a good score, you will also get the health and wellness ribbon. There's three levels to the ribbon. It is bronze, silver, and gold. The weekly PT class consists of cardio, push-ups, sit-ups, stretches, and quarterly fun PT. Connects are expected to exercise in and outside of the classrooms to have good, to remain fit and healthy to show problems on their PFT scores. If a cadet misses a PT class, they will have to come after school and work a PT team to make it up. Now I'll introduce, oh, my bad, okay. Oh, uh, the 
Sacramento, the arm team, and right in front of you at the side too. that 
team that saw it. Well,
There are six different events that are mandatory that are outside school time that we ask them to participate in, all right? One of them is the first year charm school that we talked about. It's going to happen on September 17th. They're really going to enjoy it, trust me. Uh, they're really going to enjoy it. It's starting at 0600, all right? Right, Roxy? Yeah, Roxy. So it's a sense of 
where can we go? Can we go back to Hawaii? Sure. Uh, there's been talk of going to Japan. Can we do that? Sure. But who's got to make it happen? They do. But do they get that and the work they put into it? Yeah, because the work they put in here. So those are the cool trips. Those are the things that we like to do. Along with that, Veterans Day Parade, we'll do that on the 11th, and we're talking about and competitions. A lot of these folks here participate in the Prince Steve competition to have fun. That's where they get to meet other cadets, uh, show off what they can do, and you know, it's kind of a sense of pride. It's a, our team has won, uh, I think, that have had about six top five finishes last year. Uh, we also hosted a big CCSB event here at this school. We had 23 other schools come here and participate and put that together. That was an undertaking, but nonetheless, we made it happen. We did an awesome job. So these special teams, we need people to come out. So we make the recruiting pitch to them. Now we're doing it to the parents. Have your kid come up here swinging rifles, right? Spinning rifles, marching, looking uh, very debonair, looking, uh, serving with honor, and we want to have them a part of it. So please talk to them about coming out here and joining us. Uh, and then you kind of see all the fun that we have. Uh, you see the guy on the right there, a really good looking guy. Yeah. Uh, sure all that fun there, right? Oh, last thing real quick. Uh, that picture right there, uh, that, that's to your right. Uh, every year we do a baton death march. Uh, it's in honor of the baton death march that happened during World War II. Uh, a lot of American POWs uh, in the South Pacific who were injured, hurt, had to actually hike 90 miles to a prisoner of war camp. They were captured as prisoners. So what we do uh, once a year, we take them out to Red Rock, and we do a 15-mile hike around Red Rock, okay? And that is uh, what we did uh, after that uh, hike right there. Again, if you look at the good-looking guy with black hair, all right? <laughs> that, but, you know, it's just a real great time to do it again, to honor service, those that came before us, all right? But also, it's a great bonding experience. It also gives them a chance, again, get out of the house and, you know, not to be right? All right. So we'll do that again this year in April. very seriously. You have to wear the uniform. You have to participate as part of JROTC. If your son or daughter is not participating in JROTC, then we need to have a conversation. Okay? This is not one of those classes where you say, well, I'm not just going to do that today. I don't want to do that assignment. This is not a, I don't want to do that. Okay? This is not that class. I think your son or daughter can already tell you, I like to push them up front. All right? Very early, right? They had the assignment at the very beginning. We push them in front of the class. Get, get, get out of there, right? <laughs> And a lot of them were shy, right? They didn't want to speak. My name is Susan. Right? Right? And yeah, a lot of them nodding their heads, that's actually happening. But you know what? That's okay. Because that's where a lot of these guys started. Right? That's where a lot of these guys started. They got up there, were shy, and now look at them. They come up here, they stand in front of you, and they're able to talk, you know, about our program and what we do. All right? So, uh, but, oh, sorry, go But with that, where are you for being part of it? Talk to them. You don't have the uniform on. The day that it's uh, prescribed, kind of talk to them. Hey, what happened? Something happened. Uh, going to the cleaners is not an excuse. We gave you plenty of time. You know when all the uniform days are happening. Please plan accordingly. Please work with them. Don't wait till the day before. Hey, mom, can you take this to the cleaners? I know they do that to you all, right? The very last minute. Some of y'all might have just found out about this at the last minute. Okay, right? I see some head now. So, so again, they know. They know. Please come talk to me. But if I feel there's something happening that's hindering your son or daughter, I will reach out and talk to you. 
it's especially if it's drains or stuff like that. You can feed myself and Chief Green, we love to be able to fight. The last thing, it comes four times, and this kind of cool thing about the program. I don't know if you all are familiar with court marshals or if you've ever seen the movie A Few Good Men with Tom Cruise and something like that. <laughs> well, here's the thing. We have a cadet discipline board that's headed up by our court commander and our vice commander. All right? So that cadet would have to kind of answer for, hey, what's going on? Why are you not wearing a uniform? Why are you not involved? Or if they do something wrong, for example, they end up on the naughty list in school, get suspended, get an RPC, guess what they got to see? All right? And I think, like, I forgot to do a role or if it was uh, that Gomez that said, if these cadets do anything, the teachers know they're cadets. All these teachers out here have a very high standard for your son and daughter. They have a very high standard. It's because of the fact that the cadets that came before them held a very high standard. And now the cadets here in leadership, they have maintained that standard. And we expect for you all to keep that going as well. That standard will not drop. The standard doesn't go here and you stay here. Your son and daughter has to throw them up here and meet that standard. But here's the great thing about it. It's our job to help them get there. This is not a by yourself thing. This is not a class where they go sit in the corner.
Uh, probably have another few cadets that come out to the football games and stuff like that. The ones that laid the legacy for them. Even the seniors that graduated last year, they'll keep coming through here. They forgot to graduate sometime. But it's okay. Uh, we love to see them. All right? So here, when these guys graduate, when these guys are in leadership position, they're going to come back through to either our parties and stuff like that. But that's what makes the family. All right? And that's what this is. We take care of each other first. All right? So with that, uh, I'm All right? Now, uh, I will open up the questions. Like I said, we'll be here, myself, Chief Green, all of these guys. Please ask the questions. Um, let me just say one thing, uh, then I'll wrap this up. For these guys right here to come up here, I know, you know, one of the biggest fears is public speaking, right? Like I said, I I'm definitely afraid of public speaking, as you can probably yeah. tell. Right? <laughs> but no, it, it, it's, it is a fear. But I've always learned that if you can master this, if you can come up here and be able to do this, you can take it and do everything, right? It's a big fear. I don't know if a lot of y'all can come up here and come and talk to a lot of people, but these guys put a lot of practice, a lot of work and putting it together. And, uh, you know, I show a little nervous moments. That's okay. This is how you learn. You learn through failure. You learn when you make mistakes, right? And your cadet, your son and daughter, will make a lot of mistakes in this program. You'll make a lot of mistakes. That's okay. Cadet Roxham right here. <laughs>
imagine we just got to do over the next three years and uh, three what? And three quarters of years, right? We're going to be all right. We're going to have some fun this day. We're going to have some fun. All right. I see. Yes, ma'am. Woo! Thank you.